Hello, my name is Sigmund Silber. I'm professor at the University of Munich and I'm running our cardiology practice and hospital and I'm a cardiologist. And I think I'm one of the longest participants TCT over 20 years. I'm almost here every year. And of course, I'm happy to be here again this time here at the TCT 2011 in San Francisco. One of my uh, focus today and yesterday was especially the topic of which drug eluding stents should be used for the treatment of diabetic patients. Diabetic patients are really sick patients. Uh, as I always say, diabetes type 2 is not a sugar disease, it is a vessel disease and especially a disease of the coronary vessels. And if we look at some data presented yesterday here from the Sirtux uh, five years follow-up study, uh, the event rate of major adverse events after five years in the diabetic group was about double as the event rate in the non-diabetic group. It was about 10, was a, okay. And uh, the event rate in diabetics after five years was about 30% versus the event rate in non-diabetics, which was about 15%. That means it is double. Uh, so to say about one third of diabetic patients have a major cardiac event after five years and this is a horrible high number. So we have to do something about these patients. And in the European guidelines, we have delineated very nicely which diabetic should be stented and which diabetic patients should get bypass surgery. I will not go into details right now. So let's focus on the group of diabetic patients with coronary artery disease, which needs stents. It is clear today that drug eluding stents should be preferred versus bare metal stents because diabetic patients have a considerably increased tendency of proliferative reaction of the coronary vessel. So smooth muscle cell proliferation is much more exaggerated in diabetic patients, which means they need a drug eluding stent. The question is, which drug eluding stent? And as you know, today we differentiate between drug eluding stents of the first generation and newer drug eluding stents of second or even third generation. So let's first compare the first versus newer generation drug eluding stents. And here we have again the Sirtax trial, which has shown that after five years, the Cypher stent was better cut. Oh, no, go on, go on, go on. So, so the, f the question is, which drug eluding stent should we use? Let's first compare the first generation drug eluding stent versus another first generation drug eluding stent. And here, the Sirtax trial was very helpful, showing that the Cypher stent was superior to the Taxo stent within the five years. So this might explain why you should prefer the Sirolimus versus the Paclitaxel eluding stent in diabetic patients. On the other hand, as presented here yesterday at the meeting, the meta-analysis of the SPIRIT trials together with the COMPARE trials showed interestingly that there was no difference between the second generation Everolimus eluding stent compared to the first generation Paclitaxel eluding taxa stent. So this is a kind of a contradiction. Uh, the problem is that both trials were not specifically designated to diabetic patients. So what we really would like to have is a prospective randomized trial with diabetes as an inclusion criteria, not a subgroup analysis, but an inclusion criteria. And this will be done, as announced yesterday here, by the Tuxedo trial, which will be performed in India. The Tuxedo trial 
will be a diabetic trial in over 1800 patients comparing uh, two different stents uh, in uh, the way that is a primary clinical endpoint. So this will be the first randomized trial with a primary clinical endpoint. And until then, we will have to wait for the comparison of the Texas stent with the Everolimus eluding stent. So the next question is, okay, let's forget about the first generation drug eluding stent. What about comparing two second generation drug eluding stents? And with this context, we have done in Europe the Resolute Alcama randomized trial. This was a huge study, over 2,500 patients randomized to either the Xion stent or the Resolute stent. So randomized to the Xion Everolus, Everolimus eluding stent versus the Resolute Zotarolimus eluding stent. And the primary result was published in the New England Journal and recently in the Lancet that both are equivalent. So the big question now is what about the diabetics? And since diabetics are only a subgroup, what we have done and presented yesterday here in a special session was we combined all the resolute trials together and looked at the diabetic patients. So we had all together over 5,000 patients with over 1,500 diabetic patients. This was possible because it was prospectively planned by the Resolute Global Clinical Program to have the same definitions of the inclusion or definitions of the exclusion criteria and the same definitions of the cardiac events. So on a patient level, summary of all these data, we found it very interesting to observe that there was also in diabetics no difference between the resolute and the science patients. And in the first year, both had an event rate in the primary endpoint of about 7%. What's even more striking, and I like that result very much, is that the rate of stent thrombosis in these very sick patient population in both groups was about 1%. So, don't forget, we came from 3 or 4% stent thrombosis rate with the older stent, now with the newer stent, to 1 or even below 1% per year, which is very encouraging. So what is the summary and the take-home message? The take-home message should be that in patients with diabetes, especially if they are non-insulin dependent, you should prefer a newer generation drug eluding stent over the first generation drug eluding stents. And in patients with insulin dependent diabetes, we still have to do more studies, more research, because patients on insulin still have to be worked on a better treatment. This is Sigmund Silber from TCT 2011 San Francisco.